Fantastic. One, two.
I may dwell in the house of the Lord. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies. Round about me, therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I see. Hide not thy face far from me, but put my enemy, my, your servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Maxine? To God be the glory, great and mighty and wonderful thing he has done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your breath this morning. We thank you for life. Father God, I just want to thank you for each and every one who gather here today. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you for your strength, your courage, your grace, your mercy, your comfort. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I just put this day in your hands and I ask for your leading, your guidance, and your direction in the name of Jesus. Take control. And bless each and every one of us that make the effort to be here today. We ask for your blessing, mercy upon us. Thank you. I love you, Lord. Thank you. We will remain standing for the opening hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> All right, just before we sing. We will do the scripture reading, Psalms 121, Psalms 121. If you have your Bibles or it's on your smartphones, <laughs> you can follow me along. It's a real honor to be here, um, and it's an honor to read these psalms um, in memory of my little cousin Joshua. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have our opening hymn, Sweet of.
celebrate his young life. Uh, it was short, but powerful and impactful. Come on, say amen if you agree with me. And so we are grateful today. I'm pretty sure his parents who feel this extreme loss. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, a beautiful couple. I did not know them. My first time meeting them was today. And uh, I can tell you my first impressions, they say first impressions are lasting impressions, but my first impressions of meeting you is I am amazed at your strength and um, the attitude that you have amidst the storm that you're going through. I think they're remarkable people. Let's put our hands together for them today. I really, I, I, I want to say that to you. Um, I, I've been doing this a long time, and I don't, I, I don't recall seeing too many couples who've gone through something like this as cheery and as buoyant as they are undergoing something so hard and difficult. It's obvious to me that you are individuals that love the Lord and that God is certainly the strength of your life. It is evident by what you are exhibiting and expressing here today. And uh, I think it's so wonderful for you to take your Sunday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, you come from far and near, just to be with them, to let them know that while they're walking through this difficult moment, that they're not doing it by themselves. You are here with them, holding their hands and holding them up. And so on behalf of the family, we certainly thank you. Uh, the Christian Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, we're delighted to host this particular memorial service. It is our joy to serve you and to let you know that our hearts go out to you at this time of need. Now, you have within your hands, and I hope you do, everyone should have a program. And if you have a program, we're going to follow in the order that it has been uh, constructed and designed. So at this particular time, we're going to have music, I believe. It's gonna be rendered by Joshua's mom, along with uh, Diane Wilson. So this time, feel free to come and, and sing to your heart's desire. Hello everyone, good 
afternoon. Um, Joshua, um, we're going to do this song that is one of Joshua's favorite prison worship songs. Even in his time going through, he would have requested these three songs. I'll be only do it. We'll be only doing one. But at that time, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. so fortunate to know Joshua and, and Roy and the Ramsey family. Um, we met Joshua when he was about six years old and he spent a lot of time with us and he wrote a song with me in music therapy. He was telling me all about his home in Jamaica and we wanted to have a song that showed, that talked about his 
home and connected him with his mom and his little brother when they were far apart. So, been lots of that. We, I don't think we can hear it, right? Yeah, we want the audio. Yeah, we'll start. Well, we get it back set up. Um, Joshua wrote this song together with me, but he wanted to wait till his mom and his little brother were visiting to do a music video of them all together. So this was something that he could watch um, when he was far away and missing them. Um, and anytime he came to NYU to visit after that, he always wanted to watch this video. It was really special to him. started again. Here we go. All right, uh, 
so sound room please please could you cut that out please Thank you. Wow. <laughs> there was too much footage, so we had to keep him going and keep him dancing. So, NYU, we, we love Joshua on behalf of everyone so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, a lot of life there, huh? <laughs> Yes, uh, at this time I'm going to ask for the next participant to come. The next person would like to speak. Okay? That's on the program if you're there. Anyone else designated? Yes, come there. That song was perfect for Joshua because he was always full of life and so happy. I was the lucky one. He was in my second grade class at Oakside Elementary School. And it was an extraordinary experience. He entered my class with a huge smile, as you all know, and was eager to start school. After getting to know Joshua and his father, I came to realize he was a true superhero. If you looked at Joshua, you would never know the struggles he went through behind that brave face of his. He was a fighter and was always positive. He was loved by his entire class and the entire staff at Oakside for his love of superheroes, his creativity, his uplifting and engaging personality, and his empathy towards others. It was hard not to love him and was hard not to be inspired by him. Joshua brought a smile and joy to everyone that met him. My fondest memories of Joshua were when it came time to sharing his writing and reading responses during writer's workshop. They always stemmed from the love he had for his family, and every week you would hear about all the weekends he had fun with death. He would talk about his adventures from playing basketball, and beating his dad in a game, of course, at the Kylie Center. Going to the city and meeting up with his friends, especially when he was able to wear his Stormtrooper costume the weekend before Halloween. His devotion to his church and his love for his mom and his brother. Something that was always consistent was family. That's all he wanted more than anything in the world. So as March approached, he was getting ready to go back to Jamaica and he could not wait. We were all sad, and selfishly, we did not want him to leave, but he couldn't wait to go back to be with his new family again. But even with all of his challenges, he faced the world with unparalleled hopes and optimism. His passion for learning and life inspired me and an entire class of students. Although Joshua's time here was short, take a look around us. This church is filled with people who were impacted by Joshua in some extraordinary way. It's true that there's sadness here today, but all of Joshua's journeys that were with you will live on in all of you, enriching, guiding, and blessing your lives. This is what we will remember. We will always love you, Joshua. Thank you so much for those beautiful thoughts. Um, there may be others. Uh, we have down here NYU Hospital, is the representative here. NYU, okay, you go. Hello everyone, um, I'm Cecilia Hernandez from the Ronald McDonald House from our family support team. I'm just gonna keep my remarks short and sweet. Let's try to keep it together. <laughs> So Joshua and Ken Roy and the Ramsey family were such a special part of the Ronald McDonald House. We got to stay with them, or they actually got to stay with us for some time while he was going through treatment. And Joshua just had such a bright spirit about him um, and so much energy, as you guys know. And I truly cherish all the times that we got to spend with the family, especially with Joshua. And 
the countless dance parties we had and watching him dance Michael Jackson's Thriller. I will probably saw him perform that over and over, but it always brought so much joy to my heart every time I got to see him. Um, I just wanted to extend my condolences to the family and to let you guys know that we're here with you through the journey. Um, we will always be a home for you guys and we love you guys so much and we love Joshua and I know he is here with us right now looking down upon us and um, I just wanted to say thank you Ken Roy and his wife um, for blessing us at the house and for always being such kind and generous spirits. Um, we'll truly miss you and you're always welcome back anytime. Thank you. Uh, Sloan Kettering Hospital, anyone from Sloan here? Uh, uh, the uh, New York City uh, Police Department, is anyone from there? Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Police Officer Anthony Passaro. I am a police officer assigned to the uh, New York City Police Department Community Affairs Bureau, Community Outreach Division, um, on behalf of our police commissioner, the Honorable James O'Neill, um, the Chief of Community Affairs, Nilda Hoffman, uh, Assistant Chief Kim Royster, Inspector Marlon Lyron, and Deputy Inspector Paul Valerga, as well as the 35,000 uniformed members of our service. Ken Roy and Melissa, we want to express our deepest condolences and sympathy, um, and our hearts are with you today. In, in March of 2018, we started a program in the Community Affairs Bureau called NYPD Hope, and it stands for Connecting Through Heroism, Optimism, Pride, and Encouragement. And it's for children from our city that are dealing with critical, serious, and sometimes terminal illness. In November of 2018, I had the extreme pleasure through one of our partners, which is the Be Positive Foundation, Carly and Callie, we, uh, we had the, the extreme honor of uh, inducting Joshua into our family. And when, uh, when Carly called me to tell me that she had this young man that she thinks you know, would make an incredible police officer one day, uh, she said, you're gonna know how special he is when you meet him and you talk to him and you see his smile shine through his face and through his heart. And that he did. Um, throughout the day with us, Joshua taught us magic tricks, a lot of magic tricks. Uh, he learned how to um, ride one of our police um, mounted horses. He got to play with our police canines. Uh, he took a tour of one police plaza. He sat in the chief's office and called it his office, which it was. Um, and, and Joshua actually got to sit in the command center of our police commissioner. And, you know, throughout that day, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's so great what you do with these kids. It's such, such an incredible experience you give them. But people don't realize what these kids do for us. You know, I sit there and I watch. I watch Joshua, I watch Kenroy. I watch them interact. I watch them interact with the community. I watch them interact with us, the police officers. And the lessons that he taught in faith, courage, strength. He taught us how to overcome obstacles, taught us to never quit, and he did it with a smile. And those are lessons you can't learn in any book, can't learn on TV, can't learn on YouTube. You can only learn it through the eyes of a child like Joshua. Ken Roy and Melissa, it's, it's a tough day. We're, we're, we're here, we're celebrating the life of, of, of Joshua. But I want you to know, even though he's no longer physically here with us, Joshua's legacy lives on. It lives on in the hearts and in the smiles of every kid that gets to walk through the program of NYPD Hope. Because it's because of a kid like Joshua, he inspires us to do more, he inspires us to give more. Most of all, he causes us to be better, better at life. Because that's what he taught in his short life, was how to be better at ours. So Joshua, although this isn't goodbye, it's see you later, I'll see you soon. You're, you, live with our, you live forever in our hearts, and we love you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is the B-plus foundation here? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carly, um, and I got to know Joshua through my role at the B-positive foundation. One of the first times I met Joshua, he was inpatient at NYU. The hospital social worker had suggested that Joshua become a B-positive hero, and that I just had to meet him. When I walked in the room, he was on the floor, hooked to an IV pole, and had a row of toy cars lined up. He was convinced that we could run water from the bathroom sink to the hospital room floor to set up the ultimate car wash. <laughs> he was so sure that this was a good plan. His dad, Ken Roy, had other ideas and was telling him to keep the water in the bathroom. This left me in the middle. Joshua was whispering for me to get the water with a sly smile and a real desire for clean cars. While peering around the corner, he was making sure that his dad wasn't looking. Kenroy, I'm sorry. We probably did make quite the mess that day, but the cars were clean and Joshua was exuding with happiness. Perhaps that the car wash worked, or perhaps because we snuck it past his dad. Either way, he was happy. That is how I will always remember Joshua, as happy. Whether it was attending sporting events, rummaging through my bag each time I saw him for extra fidget spinners or B-positive tattoos, or talking about Fortnite while I pretended to understand, Joshua was happy. His infectious and nonstop energy helped to unite and inspire a community, no, a family of NYU students to do good. On one of my last visits to see Joshua, he was nearly asleep as I walked into the room. Upon the door cracking open, he shot up and excitedly screamed, Callie, you're here to see me. Arguably his best friend, big sister, and mentor. He tried really hard to kindly hide his disappointment when he saw that it was just me. Just minutes later, as honest as he always was, he told me that he thought I was 21 years old, and then, just like that, all was good again in the room. Even through the pain and the exhaustion, he laughed and played with us that day, asking Callie for just a few more V-Bucks. This was Joshua pushing through regardless of what he was up against. Joshua deserved better. There are no words to adequately express the cruel and unfair, unfair world of childhood cancer. But today, as hard as it seems, I challenge us all to think of happy memories with Joshua. To every NYU student in the room who took the time to visit Joshua and play with Joshua, thank you. Every time I saw him, he asked who was coming next, often making special requests, especially for his Zeta Psi brothers. Callie, thank you for showing me and so many, what true selfless love and friendship looks like. Kenroy, Melissa, and Jashan, thank you for allowing the Be Positive family into your own family. And most importantly, thank you for allowing us to know and love Joshua. And to Joshua, thank you for your positive attitude, your bright energy, your infectious smile, and your continued fight. I can say with confidence that I am that much better for having knowing you, and I can promise you that we will work that much harder in your honor. Candle lighters, New York, did we hear from you yet? Candle lighters here. Okay, and then we also have, um, I call this one uh, uh, NYU Hospital. Are you here? One from NYU Hospital. You spoke already? NYU? Okay, good. I want to make sure I don't want to miss anybody <laughs> because all of your tributes and reflections are so wonderful, so powerful, and the family wants to hear from all of you. So before we move on, just wanted to make certain that we didn't overlook anybody. Okay? All right. 
All right, we'll move on to the life sketch. Life sketch at this time. I'm going to ask for those designated to do that to please come. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anik, and I am Millie's cousin, otherwise known as Melissa, but affectionately we call her Millie. And my sister and I drove down from Toronto to be here today to support Millie, Ken, and Josh, and to celebrate the life of Josh. I should say Millie, Ken, and Sean. We're here to support you. Joshua Ramsey, age nine years, was born to Melissa and Ken Roy Ramsey on May 17, 2010, at the Andrews Memorial Hospital, St. Andrews, Jamaica, West Indies. Affectionately called Josh, he was very protective of his three-year-old brother, Joshan, and I'm sure you've seen him running around. He loved him dearly. Joshua was loved by everyone that he came in with. His smile was contagious, and he was willing to play with anybody, regardless of their age or gender. He's always changing the rules to games to ensure that he wins. His academic journey began at the Galilee Early Childhood Institute, then Newlands Basic School, and Southboro Primary School, all in Jamaica. Here in New York, he attended the Oakside Elementary School from September 2018 to March 2019. Unfortunately, he was plagued with academic struggles and delays with learning, occasional memory loss, and countless sick days, all because of the dreadful sickness, as we all know it as cancer. It was July 3rd, 2014, back home in Jamaica, his parents were told that Joshua, being four years at the time, was diagnosed with acute leukemia. Chemotherapy was subsequently administered at the Bustamante Hospital for Children, and remission was attained in February of 2015. Joshua suffered a relapse in January 2017. And this time, a bone marrow transplant was recommended for a possible cure. Such a procedure was not available in Jamaica, so his dad traveled with him to New York on February 25, 2017, and commenced treatment that same day at the NYU Long Gone Hospital. Langone Hospital, sorry. Again, chemotherapy was administered and within four to five months, remission was attained. He was then transferred to the Memorial Sloan Kettering in August of that year to commence the bone marrow transplant process, which was successfully done on September 1st, 2017. Appointments and vaccinations followed and were on par to Joshua and his dad returning back to Jamaica, which they did on March 30th, 2019, which is this year. A reunion with family and loved ones, everyone was excited. A return to normal life, but unfortunately it was short-lived. Just a few weeks back home and Joshua suffered again a relapse which resulted in him being admitted to the Bustamante Hospital for Children on May 3rd, yet again. Two weeks after, on May 19th, Joshua and his dad traveled again to New York with the hope of doing another bone marrow transplant. Given the nature of his relapse and his overall health status, it was a 10% chance that a second bone marrow transplant would be successful or that he would even survive the treatment. The team at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital chartered the course and Joshua was resilient as always. Sadly, during the first week of July, it was explained that no more chemotherapy could be administered and hence a second transplant was no longer possible. 
battling cancer and the multiple uh, chemotherapy treatments for five years had caused internal complications, specifically to Joshua's heart, lungs, and bone marrow that was now 100% leukemic. Joshua fought a long and hard fight. His last words before going into a deep, unresponsive sleep on, May, on Monday, September 9th, was, Mommy, will you just take me to heaven now? He never woke up that day. And on Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, at 1.35, Joshua took his last breath and transitioned to eternal rest. His dad, Ken, did take on a big task, and he took on the brunt of all the overseas trips, the hospitalization that he had to go through, and occasionally mom and Deshaun would visit. Back home in Jamaica, mom nurtured Deshaun and maintained the family home, being the sole breadwinner after dad resigned his job to attend to Joshua, and we can all attest to what Ken has done over the years. Joshua's favorite color is red. We're all here in support. His favorite food changed occasionally, and, but it never changed from being curry chicken, McDonald's, KFC, and Lasco tea. If you don't know what that tea is, you can ask Ken. His favorite song, songs was one of them that his mom sang today, Jehovah is your name. My God is awesome, and let your power fall. When he was an impatient, he really enjoyed listening to these songs, and he did so prayerfully. He embraced his Christian faith, always believing that Jesus would heal him, and that one day he would be the best soccer player, and that he'd attend college, and best of all, the best Fortnite player in the entire world. All his visitors understood quite well that gaming on his iPad and playing Fortnite on Nintendo Switch was his safe haven. And if you don't believe me, you can ask his best friend, Callie. She knows all about that. She will forever be his best friend, and they will forever have such a, a bond, and she was a great mentor to him. We heard about you even in Canada. From Jamaica to the U.S. of America, he found love and grace in the hearts of those who tended to him, anyone that did, any medical care. Relatives embraced him wholeheartedly, not to mention the compassionate and compassion from all the friends who selflessly gave their time and selflessly gave different things to him throughout the time. They had people visit him in the hospital, offered emotional and moral support, and they just loved Joshua as their own children. And I know Ken and Millie are so happy that you all did that. Joshua will be sadly missed by his loving parents and his brother Tashan. His grandparents, uncles, godparents, all his relatives and his friends, best friend Callie, he'll be greatly missed, but Joshua he fought a courageous fight for five years, and he defeated acute leukemia two times. In his honor, let us ensure that the fight against childhood cancer continues on. Thank you. Joanne, I'm going to ask that you hold your song until after the family give their tributes. And before I speak, then you will. Okay? I'm Callie Leeds. I'm Joshua's best friend. Wait, I'm Timna, and he told me I was his best friend. Many of you probably felt that relationship with him as well. It was impossible not to. Joshua connected with everyone. Timna and I first entered Joshua's life as tutors after he so bravely beat cancer for the second time. Our relationships quickly 
and effortlessly became infinitely more than that. When I would come to Ronald McDonald House for our lessons, he would always greet me with a huge grin and was eager to do work even when he wasn't feeling 100%. He would never complain. Josh would constantly amaze himself when he would read a new word and often exclaimed, teacher, teacher, how did I know that? I never left without him asking about my girls, Addie and Willa, or my husband, Alex. On Valentine's Day, I brought Dunkin' Donuts and a heart balloon, and he asked me if we were on a date. I was his teacher, yet he was teaching me so many life lessons. I have never experienced a more remarkable journey than knowing, loving, and appreciating Joshua. I first met Joshua when he was seven in spring 2018 through the Andrew McDonough Be Positive Foundation. I never encountered someone with the silliness that can make you laugh for hours, combined with the pure, unadulterated strength and wisdom that comes from a life of such fullness. I often think about how many things had to line up just right for me to know that beautiful boy in the way that I did. I can't help but to think that we were brought together at this particular time for a particular reason. Since I met Joshua, I felt as if I had known him forever, and now know that I always will. He was the most incredible friend to me. He brought me along on all of his adventures, like when he was Officer Joshua Ramsey, and announced from the megaphone that he was going to arrest the people on the street for picking their noses. He always offered his opinions, like when he suggested that my boyfriend might be a bit too tall for me, and I should be with someone more his size. And he always supported me no matter what. Like when he would ask about my, how my kids at school were, tell me he just knew it when I would pass my tests and would say that I was getting better at Fortnite when I just clearly was not. He was my rock. I can hear him telling me now that I worry too much and that crying is for babies, but I can't help it. There are no words to describe the feeling that come from missing someone who brought infinite happiness, brightness, and love into your life. In loving Joshua, I gained a soulmate, one whose presence will only grow stronger as I continue to celebrate the unmatchable joy that will always be Joshua Ramsey. We are so fortunate to have known his love and have been able to walk through life with him. For that, we will always consider ourselves truly blessed. And for the care, love, and support he received from everyone here today, his nurses, doctors, and everyone who gave of themselves in so many ways, his family and friends here and in Jamaica will always be grateful. Josh Ong, your brother was a superhero. He was so strong and so brave, but most importantly, he loved you more than anything. You're so brave and strong, just like Joshua, and he will always live in your heart. You are brave and strong. He would want you to smile, laugh, and play, and to always work hard to learn. <laughs> we hope you'll promise to give your mom and dad lots of hugs, and to one day soon, come back and see us. To Kenroy and Melissa, Joshua's personality and soul is a testament to who you are as parents. You enabled his spirit and wonderful and loving manner. He knew how loved he was by you, and in return, shared his love with each of us. Your dedication and devotion to him never wavered, even under the most unthinkable circumstances. May your faith in God and his divine plan for Josh comfort you during this difficult time. Although you will return to Jamaica, we will carry Josh, Jashan, and you in our hearts every day. We hope New York will always be a second home to you. We are people who cherish your son and we're inspired by you each and every day. Josh, even though we were your teachers, you taught us life lessons that we will never forget. You always wore a smile despite how you felt and you found joy in simple things like transformers and munchkins. We, having known you, will try harder to find our smiles and to treasure the simple things in life. Thank you for enriching our lives and making us better moms, teachers, and friends. We miss you word more than words can express. And may you know that wherever we are, you will be. Thank you.
Uh, we will continue with the family and friends, the tributes. All right, if, is, who will be the next? You want to give a tribute to Josh? <laughs> if, To the household of faith this afternoon, grace, peace, and mercy. To the pastors, other members. To Melissa and Kenroy. This evening, my name is Reverend Dr. Claudette Duncan Norman, and I am a cousin of Joshua. I would find it no other way than to be here. I know like today was my day to preach, but I had to be here. I left church because I wanted to be here. We're a family. But let me say this. In May of 27, 2019, I received one of the most devastating call out of Toronto, Canada that my mom suffered a massive stroke. And I was devastated, so was the family. We were going back and forth at all times. But the thing that gave me courage about the journey was every time I asked about Joshua, and I would hear about the way that he's fighting this fight, and how he would encourage his mom to hold strong because God is in charge then I know certainly his strength coming from God. And for those of you who are not aware, but Joshua, his line comes out of a family that is deeply loved and loved the Lord with all their heart and with all their mind and their soul. So tonight it gives, it, it, I can't say that I'm wondering where he's at. Because I know that he's somewhere around the throne of God. If my mother was able to be here, she would. If my mom was able to speak, she would say, just let him know that I love him, but the Lord loves him best. So tonight I will say, he is somewhere around the throne of God, somewhere around the throne of my God, we'll keep searching and searching until we shall find him, but he's somewhere around God's throne. For I went to the house that I used to grow. The grass was all grown and it covered that door. Someone across the street says, whom do you see? For no one, no one lives there anymore. And God's people say, For he is somewhere around the throne of God. Somewhere around the throne of my God. I'll keep searching and searching until I shall find him. For he is somewhere around God's throne. 
Then I went to the church that I used to go. The preacher was standing and he met me at the door. He says, I know who you are and who you're searching for. But he, he doesn't come here anymore, God's people say. For he is somewhere around the throne of God. Somewhere around the throne of my God. We we'll keep searching and searching until we shall find him. Kali, he is somewhere around God's throne, Melissa. He is somewhere around the throne of God, yes, Ken Roy. Somewhere around the throne of my God. We'll keep searching, yes, my cousin Jim, and searching until we shall find him. But he's somewhere around God's throne. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual forever shine. God bless you all, Pastor. We appreciate that beautiful song. Amen, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, I believe there are all the relatives and friends that would like to render a tribute. If so, please come. We welcome you at this time. If there are any other relatives or friends that would like to say a brief word, okay? We give everybody two minutes, okay? A minute to two minutes to come and speak. If there's anyone else from the family, immediate family or friends that would like to say something at this point, feel free to come. This is your moment, okay? Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I just want to take the opportunity to say I really am happy to be here to share in the life of Joshua. I've known Joshua before he was even born. So, you know, I'm from Jamaica, known Melissa Ramsey. We grew up together back in the National Baptist Full Gospel Church. Today I'm not here to mourn and I'm not sad because Josh has fought that fight. Josh gave me strength. Many days when I'm down, living here now and I'm down, I would probably go back to social media and read some of the things and Josh gave me strength. I said, man, a little boy, he can really fight. I don't think I could fight like that. But Josh gave me strength to go on and to really continue serving God. And today I just want to big up, as we say, our own Jamaican language, Ramsey Ken. He's a man of strength, a man of courage. I don't think I've seen any other father who actually, the only thing is it was to give up his life. He fought that fight with that fight with his son. He went all the way. And today I want to say to you, Ken, wherever you are, big up. You're really a man of strength and a man of God. Melissa, you stood behind Ken and you keep the journey, keep the fight going. And today we just want to thank God for you. God bless you as two young people together. We just wanted to continue fighting this good fight. We have not lost Josh. It's just a step ahead before us. Josh has not lost a battle. And that's, where re that's what we are really happy about. He fight, fight, fight until it was his time to go. Because, I mean, we're all going to go. 
So he did fight on. And today we want to say, God bless you. You just keep the strength, keep the courage, and be strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, first, over here, then you. You have a seat right here. Sit right here. Then we'll, you'll be next, okay? Josh, he's my best friend. Josh, I love him like he was the metal in my heart. And Josh, I love him so much that this day that comes on, I hope that his family can pull through everything that went through with Josh. I love, I love Josh. But I met Josh, but when the first time I stepped into the hospital, Josh made me put a smile on my face. He brought the wonders into my heart, and he, and he made me smile like I have never smiled before. And, and I love Josh so much that the day that comes here to bring me today is that I I I love Josh that I would not if I didn't love Josh so much that, that I do I would not be here today standing game. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good, good evening, everyone. So, um, you know, the saying in the Bible is that a child should lead us. And we're all sitting here today because of Josh. Uh, I've grown up, I grew up with Kenroy. I've uh, known him since what, birth? Uh, we, grew, we grew up together in the same community uh, until he got married and moved. So, you know, he's like a brother to me. So Josh is like a nephew to me. And there's one thing that I know while I was sitting there and I heard everyone speaking is that Josh has given us a charge. This thing that we call cancer, he has given us a charge to now combat that, to fight it, to find a cure for it. That it was his purpose. And he has touched every single person's life here. So if we know and we know Josh, always a smile, even when he's in pain, always a smile, always have something to say so we could laugh. We should take that and know that, listen, for Josh, we can do this. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, I should say. I'm a little bit nervous, but um, I'm like, a, to myself, I call myself like a sister to the family of Josh. I didn't get to be that close to him before he passed, but I know he's in the arms of God. And this afternoon, I just want to encourage the family by singing this song, a verse of this song. I've lost some good friends a long life way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay but thank god i didn't lose everything i've lost faith in people who said they care in times of my crisis they were never there but in my disappointment in my season of pain 
One thing never wavers, one thing never change. I never lost my hope. Mm -hmm. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith. But most of all, I never lost my praise. And I never lost my hope, mm, Lord. And I never lost my joy. And I never lost my faith. But most of all, oh, I never lost my praise. I just want to say to the family, just keep your faith in God continually. Despite the past, I know he's in the arms of God. Just trust God, because he's always there for you. Be strengthened. This is our last person. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Max, and I was the uh, B positive liaison for Zeta Psi and represented all the brothers when we got to uh, visit him. And I first met Joshua in summer of 2017. And when I first met him in Kenroy with Carly and my friend Finn, I just immediately knew that Joshua was someone who was always happy and regardless of the situation was <laughs> able to put it aside and focus on what was good in his life and when I saw him and Kenroy I knew that they could conquer anything with their faith um, after I visited him there we got to spend time with Josh at a bunch of other events and got to dance with him at NYDM this December play soccer with him in the park among other things and you know it's just <laughs> It's, it's a journey that someone you can't even imagine unless you're in that perspective. And Josh was so strong and taught us, all the brothers at Zeta Psi, how to be thoughtful, courageous, and persistent. And he'll always be in our hearts. And we're always here for the Ramsey family. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My condolences to all the family and friends who have come to support.
is to blame My death was meant to be Don't carry guilt or shame The reason why I came soon You're gonna see Don't cry for me Don't shed a shared with you will always be and when I'm gone still carry on don't cry for me don't cry when life is not the joy it should be for in life comes pain soon time will lead its course appointed and you're gonna be rewarded and all the world will see don't us with such lovely music and renditions, uh, so touching, so moving, so appropriate to the moment. Uh, let's put our hands together for all of our singers. Did I think they did a beautiful job today? I, I appreciated all that music. And, uh, you know, I, I was sitting here, and one of the things that I was moved by was the dedication and the commitment by those who serve this little boy. You know, we live in a time when sometimes people go to work and they just do a job because it's a job. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Come on, say amen if you would. You got it? You know? But I did not hear that this afternoon. What I heard as I listened to uh, all the wonderful tributes and reflections of the fact that for many of you, it's not just a job. You're giving service because you care. And I think you ought to put your hands together because I, I think that's a wonderful spirit. And I want to say to you, may your tribe increase because you're the kind of people that we need in order to make a better society and a better world. And I'm pretty sure the family of Joshua appreciates that. Now I notice, uh, Mr. Ramsey, I've been seeing y'all in the back. I want y'all to come inside, because what I have to say is to you. <laughs> now if you notice, I decided to change uniforms. Did y'all pay attention? I had a black robe on, and I see y'all dressed in your red. You know, I said, now, 
understand that red was Josh's favorite color, so I had to go put on something that was red. <laughs> okay. Now, normally, I don't ever do that. I'm usually, you know, you know you're black. But since uh, Joshua was such a lively individual and red was his color, I said, well, I'm going to put on a red robe today. Is that okay with y'all? Okay, break the tradition. Not black, but red in honor of little Joshua. I am so thankful to God that he was blessed to have parents like you. I can't hear y'all out there. Wonderful parents. I know this journey has certainly not been easy. It's been challenging. It's been difficult. Together you've had many sleepless nights, agonizing moments, dealing with your son's illness. And then to see that he's resting now. It won't be over. There will still be that vacuum, that void, that's going to be there, and you'll have to deal with that from time to time. But you know, there's a beautiful text that I was looking at as I was thinking about you, taken from the book of Isaiah, and I just want to read it in your hearings, Isaiah the 43rd chapter. Here's what he says. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. Now get this part, this is for you. It says here, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kill upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. God is better than the ear of hut. <laughs> God is better than all those who give us earthly promises because the Lord keeps his word. Come on, say amen out there, y'all. Okay, now my congregations talk back to me. That all right? So when I say, because now, as, as I always tell them now, if you don't talk back to me, I'm going to preach long. And so you better talk back to me. Okay, when I say, say amen, amen, amen. amen. Oh, there you go. There you go. Now, I want to lift up a passage that comes from the book of Matthew. And I'm just going to read it in your hearing. I don't know if my friends can put it on the screen so you can see it. Matthew chapter 13. And um, just looking at these verses, verses 24 through verse 30. And here's what the word says. The word says, uh, Jesus is speaking. And Jesus at times spoke in what we refer to as parabolic language. That simply means that he was a master storyteller. A parable is a story. It means to throw something that illustrates a, a point alongside of. And so what he would only do, he told these stories. That's how Jesus communicated. And, and here he's telling this, this story. He says, look, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemies came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. And so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in thy field? From whence cometh these tears? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while ye gather up the tears, ye weed up also the wheat with them. He says, Let them both grow together until the harvest. 
And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears, and bind them in bundles, and burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. Merciful Father, as we speak today, just a few words of comfort. Help us to understand in Christ's name, amen. We live in a world where we are faced with constant tragedies. All kinds of situations has occur, and to, to us who are rational beings, we wonder and we probe the depths of these occurrences, and we ask the question, why? Why did we recently have a hurricane with its devastating effects or, or, or down there in the islands of the Bahamas, and all these people lost, many of them lost their lives? Why do individuals uh, somehow die in these freak accidents? Why do we have violent people walking around our neighborhoods senselessly taking lives? Why do we have these things taking place amongst us? What is the rationale for it? And in response to that question, Jesus answers it. Jesus in this memorable parable says, there was this farmer and the farmer went out and the farmer planted good seed. And he expected a good crop. He, he planted wheat, and he expected to find what, everybody? Wheat. But then they noticed that when the, the, the blades of the wheat started to grow up, there was something else in the field, something that didn't belong there, something that the farmer did not plant. And then when the owner came, he said, what is that? He, and how did it get there? An enemy has done that. For you see, in old times, if somebody did not like you, they would mess up your crop by planting something in your field that was a noxious weed or that, that did not belong there. And this is what happened. And so the, the Lord is saying here, listen, when I created this world, I did not create pain or sorrow. I did not create disease. I am not responsible. The Bible says I'm not responsible for anything that we see down here that's bad. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God. God did not create evil. God did not create what we see in this world that disturbs us and plagues us and causes us distress and unhappiness. God did not create that. An enemy has done this. Who is this enemy? The Bible declares that there is somebody named Satan. And Satan who is at war with God. And in this war with God, this satanic creature is responsible for what we see in this world. All the pain, all the sorrow, all the sickness, all the loss, all the disease, all that plagues us, all that causes the trouble that we face is caused by an enemy. It's an enemy that causes death. But here's the good news. The good news is God is not finished yet. Come on, say amen. See, a good God is not going to allow this to last much longer. A good God is not going to tolerate all that we see in this world, for the Bible tells us in Revelation, the 21st chapter, and I read in your hearing, John, John, one day as he was thinking about these things and he was on the Isle of Patmos, he was sitting there wondering, when is, what is the Lord going to do about all this suffering in this world? And he looked up and he said, and I saw, oh, I love these words, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. 
and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Here's the part I want us to get family. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. God says, I'm going to bring this all to an end. This was not my original will. We live in the time juxtaposed between God's original will and his ultimate will. We live in a time of what is called his permissive will. He allowed things to happen just for a little while. See, to us, we look at a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years is a long time. But God doesn't look at things like that. God looks at things from an eternal perspective. And so God says, the time will come when I'm going to end this. And little Joshua is not going to stay in a grave. Come on, say amen, somebody. You see, he is not just the creator. Our God happens to be the recreator. He will resurrect his children. He'll take them up out of the ground. And we're thankful for all the wonderful work you hospitals do. But in that day, we won't need hospitals. Won't need doctors, won't need medicine, won't need any of that. Why? Because God will put new life into his saints. Bring them up out of the grave. He's going to say on that day to Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, here is your son. Come on, say amen, somebody. Now, what you got to do is be faithful to them. Hello? Songs writer says, until then. You got to be faithful until then. When the harvest comes. That's what the text says. The text says there will be a harvest. And when the harvest comes, he's going to take all of the evil, all of the wickednesses in this world, bundle it up, Burn it up. Now, I know there's a whole lot of folk that talk about hell and all that stuff. Hell was not made for us. The Bible says hell was made for the devil and his angels. That's not made for us. You're made to live with God. Come on, say amen, somebody. You ain't got to worry about that. God's going to destroy it, and he will burn up Satan and all that he has done. That's wickedness. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to that glorious day. You see, on that glorious day, we're not going to need caskets. There won't be need anymore for hurts. There won't be any more graveyards. It'll all be gone. Because the Lord will come and save his own. Be faithful to them. God bless you. I know it's not easy. It's difficult to walk through the valley which you're going through. But you've got a divine shepherd who has promised to be with you through the thick and the thin. Your divine shepherd says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Can I get an amen somewhere, everybody? I'll never leave you. I'm not going to quit. Everybody else, but I'll be right there. Amen. I'll comfort you in the time of sorrow. I will be with you in your pain. I will be with you in your sorrow. I will be with you in the midnight when you shed those tears because you missed that little boy. My God says, I'll be with you. And I'm just encouraging you by God's grace. Hold on to the promises of God. Amen. God bless you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Merciful Father, we're thankful that even though we have to deal with difficult moments in this world in which we live, 
we lost little Joshua. But Lord God, we know he's only gone for a moment. Right now, we experience the pain of that loss. But he was a faithful little boy. He was a good person. Even though he was young, even though he didn't live long, his life was powerful. He taught us lessons of how to be better people and he's made us better people than we are because of his existence. We pray, Father God, that by your grace that you would bless this family, strengthen them, keep them. In the blessed, powerful name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Mr. Ramsey. Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. Thank you all for coming here today. Um, what is evident in our gathering is the fact that Joshua was loved and will always be loved. A number of persons uh, had sent their apology for not being here today. But I appreciate the sacrifices that have been made, not only for you all being here today, but throughout his journey. The love, the support, that the family had received, I can say without hesitating, being away from home for two years and a month, Joshua and I were never in need. The support we received, the love we received, truly overwhelming. Today, uh, I honestly want to grieve I want to cry, but deep down in my heart, there is a rejoicing that in the nine years that he lived, he touched a lot of lives. He motivated a lot of persons. And as young as he was or his, people in general looked to him for strength and for hope and for faith. Thank you all for coming and um, let me let me not be specific in naming any one individual or organization, but categorically I thank you all. And I appreciate, you know, my fellow cancer moms over by the back there. They have kids going through cancer. You know, they have kids who are battling. They have kids who are struggling. They have kids who are clinging to hope, clinging to the mercies and the grace of God for survival. I love you guys. We know the struggle. We know the heartache. We know what it is like to hear there's nothing more that can be done for your child. Thank you all again. Thank you for the church, Pastor, for extending your courtesy and your blessings towards our family. Thank you all. Thank you. Praise the Lord to hear what Josh has done. <laughs> and we come to the end where our song, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. 
The song, the words of the song is enlisted in the program. If you have a program, just look and the words are listed there. So we will stand. <laughs> Let us stand as we sing our closing. to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God and our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. 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 This time you are dismissed. Um, there will be a, a, um, a brief repast next door. I believe the family and friends are asking everyone to come to spend some time with them over there. Okay? Thank you. So once you go out here, just go to the next building and you'll be able to go right in there and there's seats there. Okay?
His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name The sun comes up song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Sing your praise on air.